or I'll drain every last ounce of his precious life. Hi, this is I'm Kanosh, and welcome to another marvelous video. Today, we're going to explore the backstory of the oldest mutant in the Marvel Universe. Officially, Namor the Submariner, who made his debut in 1939, is regarded as the first mutant superhero ever published by Marvel Comics. But it wasn't until Fantastic Four annual issue number one, many years after its initial debut, that Namor was actually referred to be a mutant. So, who are we referring to if it's not the King of Atlantis? Well, today, we're going to talk about Black Queen Selene. She's a mutant who was born approximately 15,000 years before Christ. However, restricting Selene to just a mutant would be a mistake, as she is someone who has stories and connections outside of the traditional mutant formula and with other major teams apart from the X-Men. So let's not waste any more time and start learning about her as we dive into her origin story. Three, two, one, let's go. Before we go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks and let's begin. The Black Queen Selene's backstory explored. Like I said, Selene is the oldest human mutant known to science in the Marvel Universe. Her millennia long life depends on her capacity to absorb the life essence of other beings in order to prolong her own existence endlessly. Her name is derived from Selene, the offspring of the Titans, Hyperion, and Thaya. Selene was born around 17,000 years ago, someplace in what is today known as Central Europe, after the oceans had swallowed Atlantis and just before the birth of Arias, claiming to be older than the contemporary men. Selene's mother was relatively young when she gave birth to her, but she would be dead before Selene could speak her first words. Her tribe's elders recognized her for what she was and ordered the whole tribe, including her mother, to give their lives to feed her. They are the ones to provide her with the name of Selene. Selene was shown to be a longtime foe of the sorcerer. Kulan Gath. Kulan Gath fought Conan the Barbarian and Red Sonja during the Hyborian Age. Sonja allegedly killed him and his ghost did not reappear until the contemporary period. Marvelous story arcs of Selene. Events in Rome. Selene arrived in Rome during the height of its reign. She went up to Eliphas, a well-known senator whose wife had left him for a general called Mascius. Selene promises Eliphas immortality in return for his assistance in killing and absorbing every soul in Rome. Eliphas walked around the city performing rituals and drawing symbols, but one time he advised a tiny girl to get her family away. The girl's father notified the authorities and Eliphas and Selene were apprehended before the spell could be cast. However, Selene assassinated the guards just before they were burnt at the stake. She then cursed Eliphas with an eternity of torment for the perceived treachery, changing him into a vampire-like beast. Eliphas was buried alive for 700 years before being found in a field by a farmer fighting the new mutants. In the first century BCE, Selene abandoned Rome and sailed to the New World, where they created Nova Roma, or New Rome, in a hidden valley in the Amazon jungle, in what is now known as Brazil. For unclear reasons, Selene could not leave Nova Roma and remained for over 2,000 years as the black priestess of the terrible cult of fire. Selene originally appeared as a spouse of Nova Roma, Senator Marcus Domitus Gallio, who plotted to topple the opposing government by assassinating opposition leader Senator Akia and establishing himself as the imperial ruler. Selene attempted to murder Amara Akia, the daughter of Senator Akia, by knocking her into a lava pool, releasing the latter's dormant mutant powers as magma. Amara hid for years until she was apprehended by the new mutants on an excursion in the Amazon rainforest. They discovered her disguise, but both Amara and the new mutants were apprehended and imprisoned by the troops of Nova Roma. Amara, who was now imprisoned by Selene, was to be sacrificed. As Selene started using her her mutant abilities to absorb Amara's life essence into her own, Mirage, the new mutant, attacked Selene, leading to a diversion that enabled Selene to get out of Amara. But Selene hurled Amara into a pit of lava. Instead of hurting Amara, her plunge into the lava reawakened her dormant mutant powers as magma. Amara and the new mutants overcame Selene and helped stop Senator Gallio's attempt to assassinate Senator Akia and gain control. Selene was trapped inside the volcano, seemingly buried alive, but of course, she escaped pretty soon turning into the Black Queen. After her escape, Selene instructed her devotees to duties that enabled her to leave Nova Roma. She traveled to New York City where she met Juggernaut at a pub. Wolverine engineered a bar scuffle between Juggernaut and Colossus, preventing Selene from seducing and murdering Juggernaut. She then discovered Rachel Summers' existence and attempted to convert her into a slave, only to be thwarted by the X-Men. Selene had traced Rachel back to the home of a young guy called Nicholas Damiano, who had 
allowed the homeless Rachel to spend the night before the X-Men saved her. Rachel vowed vengeance on Celine after she brutally murdered the young man. After that, Celine asked Frederick von Roheim, the local high priest of the global cult of fire, for helping her procure lodgings where she might quietly and discreetly perform her evil arts. Von Rohim, a Hellfire Club member, presented Celine to the Black King, Sebastian Shaw, who was looking for formidable members for his inner circle. When Shaw called Celine for an audition, she utilized her enormous power to effortlessly control both Shaw and the throne. Celine's strike would have smothered and killed Shaw if he hadn't already gathered enough kinetic energy to narrowly disengage. Celine then rebuilt Shaw's throne and sat on it. This was accurately seen by Shaw as Celine Celine putting him in his place. Shaw realized Celine's unrivaled power and what she might do to him if he dared to cross her. He understood that he could not stop Celine from becoming his new black queen. Shaw personally led an official welcoming ceremony for Celine. On the other hand, Celine was unimpressed, mocking the ceremony in front of Shaw. Shaw observed Celine's apparent attempt to confront him and his right to govern once more and understood she was stronger than him and more ambitious. After becoming the new Black Queen, Celine continued undermining Shaw's authority by openly listening in on his private discussions and using her magic to enter and depart his rooms as she pleased. Shaw and Emma Frost plan to murder Celine by grooming and influencing the young mutant Firestar to murder her. Knowing it was only a matter of time until Celine made a move to destroy his rule, the scheme backfired when Firestar discovered what they were up to. The Hellfire Club's association with the X-Men reached a boiling point when Rachel attempted an unlawful assassination of Selene. Wolverine was obliged to prevent Rachel from becoming a killer, therefore he brutally injured Rachel to preserve Selene's life. Selene was incensed by the occurrence and exploited it to force the Lord Cardinal to agree to seek and murder Rachel. The X-Men and Lord Cardinal immediately began a struggle over this issue, but it was abrupt interrupted when it caught the notice of Nimrod, the super sentinel who had assassinated Selene's helper, Rohim, and he was equally determined to destroy the X-Men and Lord Cardinal. The Lord Cardinal and the X-Men quickly agreed to a ceasefire after battling well enough to drive Nimrod away. Following this conflict, much was made in the pages of the New Mutants about Selene having secret intentions concerning Nova, Roma and Magma. Magma left the New Mutants to serve the Hellions because she loved Empath, only to be summoned home by her father to embark on a planned marriage with a resident there. Empath led Magma back to Nova Roma, and she eventually decided to stay in the city with her. The two fell in love, and Magma was finally released from her betrothal to be with him. Unbeknownst to Magma, Selene so surreptitiously manipulated events during the reorganization of the new mutants into X-Force, Nova Roma 2.0. Empath disclosed in New Warriors issue 31 that the origin of Nova Roma was a complex fabrication, fabricated by Selene decades before. In a desperate attempt to recreate wonderful times from her days in ancient Rome, Selene organized for a large number of people to be kidnapped and taken to the Amazon jungles, to a city built according to her plans where she could indoctrinate them into believing that they were descendants of ancient Roman immigrants living in the Amazon. Magma was one of these indoctrinated and stolen spirits. The city was abandoned and its inhabitants returned to their prior lives worldwide. Enter the upstarts. When tensions between Shaw and the newly recruited White King Magneto erupted, Selene's vote was for the determining factor in removing Shaw from the Hellfire Club. Unbeknownst to Magneto or Emma Frost, Selena decided she no longer needed the club and had began plotting its annihilation. She recruited a group of teenage mutants known as the Upstarts, with the assistance of the mutant Omnipath known as the Games Master. Under Selene's command, the Upstarts went on a killing rampage that resulted in the supposed murders of the Reavers, Sebastian Shaw, Magneto and Donald Pierce, as well as Emma Frost's mortal injuries and the Hellions' death. Selene received her young followers with the promise of a game wherein each murder committed would result in points that would eventually result in being given a reward, which was the game's master characterized as the next best thing to immortality. Selene's affiliation with the upstarts, however, ended with the yet another writing shift when Trevor Fitzroy betrayed her. Selene was imprisoned in a technology that repeatedly spooled her flesh from her body, restored her, and then started the process over again. The game's master became aware of this and used the opportunity to appoint himself the new leader of the upstarts. Amanda Sefton would ultimately release her, but the abuse had left her disfigured and frail. Further adventures. After her release, Selene immediately attacked and murdered the other externals, who were still alive since she needed to regain her strength. Despite X-Force's opposition, she overcame the mutants and finished the slaughter before Cable's timely intervention. When Selene touched Cable's techno-organic arm, her effort to absorb Cable's life failed.
failed and she was forced to leave to save her power. Soon after, she used a rune staff created from the roots of Egdrasil, the world tree in Norse cosmonology, to attempt to tap into the power of celestial confluence. When she came to the exploding Colossal Man celebration in New Mexico, X-Force once more resisted her. They ultimately stole the rune staff from her and destroyed the Colossal Man mannequin it created. Selene resolved to exact revenge on X-Force after missing a chance to gain power. She then reappeared in Brazil, where she and Deviants, disguised as S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives, had been tracking Sunspot. She used the promise of a powerful position in the Hellfire Club to entice Sunspot to her side. Despite her best efforts to seduce him with illusions, he rejected them. To prevent the Deviants at the Damocles Foundation from activating a Celestial Gatherer, Sunspot collaborated with Selene. The Sword Assault Squad attacked Selene, but she was able to cast a spell that transformed them into lizards. Selene was able to take over the equipment that triggered the Gatherer with help from X-Force, but Arcadia and Moonstar destroyed the Celestial Relic before Selene could use its powers. Back to the Hellfire Club. Selene returned to her position as the Hellfire Club's Black Queen. Selene presented Sunspot with the role of Black Rook after making a deal with the demon Blackheart and banishing the rest of the inner circle. Sunspot initially rejected the offer, but changed his mind after learning that accepting would allow Selene and Blackheart to resurrect the spirit of Juliana Sandoval, the young woman who died saving Sunspot's life before he joined the New Mutants. Sunspot agreed to Selene's request and took on the role of her ward. Margali Sados and the Shadow Hunters quickly restrained Selene to the caverns beneath the Hellfire Clubhouse. However, she was given some ability thanks to the partnership with Donald Pierce. Selene planned to exploit Rachel to entirely liberate herself until the X-Men, including Emma Frost and Rachel Summers, came during a membership change in the Hellfire Club. Through a transmat device, she tracked Rachel to Hong Kong and prevented her from being corrupted by a physical agent of Courtney Ross, who was trying to succeed the current White Queen. This was a prelude to Selene gaining control of Rachel's thoughts. But Rachel, the Marvel girl, proved too powerful for Selene and drove her out, locking Selene under the Hellfire Club's main headquarters for a moment. Post M Day. Selene was one of the few mutants that kept their abilities after the events of M Day. With her and Selene, who was posing as an elderly woman, became friends and shared a home in Mutant Town. She urged him to make use of his abilities and not be scared of his inherent talents. Selene had been murdering many people by draining their life energies, and a witness saw her disguise at her last feeding. When the police later assaulted her, she managed to murder two of them before being shot several times. The event of Necrosha. A new inner circle made up of Eli Bar. Art, Senyaka, Mortis, Blink, and Wither travel with Selene as she returns to the region of Central Europe where she was born. Together with the Inner Circle, she begins to carry out her plan to turn into a goddess. They visit the New York Hellfire Club chapter and massacre everyone there. Selene then goes for those who, in her opinion, have interfered with her pursuit of divinity, including Frost, Pierce, Magma, Shaw, and the X-Men. Then Caliban and Thunderbird take her to Genosha, also called Necrosha, by Selene, where she declares that her quest will end. While most of the revived mutants attack the X-Men and Utopia, Selene is shown working with Bard to restore Genosha's slain citizens. At the same time, Cerebro notices the mutant population growing by millions. However, despite having died before M-Day, many of the dead have been stripped of their powers. After that, the Coven establishes a base in Necrosha, while Wither and Mortis describe what transpired. It comes out that Selene is still unable to perform the ceremony, since Bard misplaced the knife needed for it. She then then sends out her men who successfully retrieve the knife while apprehending Warpath. Selene stabs Eli to death after Bard hands her the knife and declares her his true love. Did you get that guys? Don't let love turn you blind. Warpath is finally saved by the Vanisher, but Selene collects all the nearby souls during that time, becoming bright blue and enlarging herself. She succeeds in becoming the goddess she had long yearned to be. She orders her servants to bring her more souls as she turns to face them. After teaching X-Force the ghost dance, a technique designed to exterminate wicked spirits like Selene. Warpath was able to slay Selene by thrusting his blade into her chest. Selene erupts into light rays in shock at how swiftly her moment of divinity was taken away. The Resurrection. It was subsequently discovered that Selene's body and her spirit had been kept as airborne particles and stashed in a vault someplace in New York City. Lady Deathstrike and the Enchantress obtained entrance to the vault and using newly strengthened magic gifted her by Archaea, the sentient virus. She was able to completely restore Selene to physical life in order to include her in the newly created Sisterhood of Mutants. Alternate versions of Moon Goddess Selene. Selene has appeared multiple times in the Marvel comic universe, canon or non-canon. Her alternate version appeared in Exiles issue 55 
1945, where Kulan Gath had cast a spell that threw much of America back in time, but he was immediately ousted and succeeded by Zarathos, the spirit of vengeance. Selene had gotten acclimated to 20th century living and plotted to dispose Zarathos by any means necessary. She forged an easy alliance with the exiles when they arrived in reality and assisted them in stopping both Zarathos and Kulan Gath. With a planet free of their grip, she performed her own spell and restored the world to its original state. Another version of Selene appeared in the pages of New Mutants Forever. Selene was shown to be Magma's grandmother in this universe, and she seemed to care for her more than her mainstream counterpart. She utilized all of her resources as a Hellfire Club member when Magma was abducted and transported back to Nova Roma. Selene traveled to the remote city with the New Mutants, only to learn that the Red Skull was responsible for the kidnapping. The Red Skull poisoned her, rendering her physionic powers and mutant abilities powerless against the toxin. Selene appeared to develop a heroic edge as she led the charge to slay the Red Skull. Selene thrived as a leader, refusing to let the city she established fall to the enemy. When a Nova Roma resident donated his life to her, she sucked his energy to restore herself and pledged to respect his name when she killed the Red Skull. The last fight was harsh, but Selene and her men prevailed, driving the Red Skull from the city and rescuing her granddaughter. Or I'll drain every last ounce of his precious life. What makes Black Priestess Selene so powerful? Selene is a mutant as well as a strong witch who is immortal. She possesses a wide range of extraordinary talents, although it's never been known which are her true mutant powers and which are gained from magic or other sources. She's a psychic vampire who can sustain herself by physonically sucking other people's life essence into herself. If she drains a person's whole life power, the victim dies instantly and crumbles to dust. If Selene just drains half the victim's life power, she gains telepathic control over her victim's psyche, subverting them to her will. Selene may induce any human to transform into a psychic vampire, like herself by unknown techniques, but they must submit to Selene's wishes. Selene's youthful beauty and vigor are dependent on her regularly absorbing the light of one or more individuals. Selene may boost her physical strength, agility, endurance, dexterity, reactions, and durability to superhuman levels by absorbing life energy. The quantity of energy she has absorbed from her victims appeared to be related to her physical strength and resilience to damage. Selene can travel at superhuman speeds of roughly more than 170 miles per hour for a brief period. However, this takes a significant expenditure of energy and can lead to her aging quickly and required additional life energy instantly. It is unknown how frequently Selene must drain a human's life power to survive. Selene ages rapidly due to her high expenditure of strength, yet she may revitalize herself by absorbing additional life energy. Selene appears to be impervious to most conventional injuries. She has survived a knife wound and a crossbow bolt to the heart with no apparent long-term consequences. While not invincible, she has lived and healed entirely from a molecular incorporation, but it took some time. Selene is also a gifted telekinetic. Her most direct weapon is the ability to telekinetically animate and lift inanimate materials on a molecular level by projecting a portion of her absorbed life energy into it. She has the ability to twist and change the molecules of inanimate things to her liking, causing materials to wrap around and restrict others, building lifelike humanoid constructions to confront her opponents, or just turning objects to dust. She may use her power in more conventional ways, such as making enormous electric fields around herself and floating herself and others, but she cannot fully fly. Selene can also control the manipulated fire in various ways, albeit she cannot produce it. Not everyone can be the human torch. Selene has an unspecified amount of psychic talent. Selene was able to communicate communicate mentally after using her skills to scan her mind for information. She frequently used telepathy to blend her mental signature into the ambient thoughts surrounding her, making her difficult to identify or trace, or create a hypnotic stupor in others, during which she slips away with super speed, leaving them with the feeling that she just vanished. Selene also has the ability to momentarily take on the appearance of others. Selene boasts considerable magic skills and a comprehensive understanding of sorcery, allowing her to cast and counter spell. While the extent of Selene's magical ability is unknown, her vastly prolonged existence has provided her with enough knowledge and experience to threaten Kulan Gath. She conjured up an illusion powerful enough to fool Kulan Gath in his most formidable state. The Eye of Agamotto revealed Selene to be one among numerous magic users, with the potential to succeed Doctor Strange as Sorcerer Supreme. Wow, does that mean that we'll see her on the big screen? Well, who said we didn't already? 
not the only one who can control my Other media appearances of Celine. Celine was featured as a member of the Inner Circle in the 2009 animated series Wolverine and the X-Men, voiced by April Stewart. To free the Phoenix from Jean Grey, she and the Stepford Cuckoos occupy Mastermind's position in the original Dark Phoenix saga. She frequently disagrees with Emma Frost and questions her commitment to the group. She told Scott that Emma and her cuckoos were to blame for the unexplained explosion and the institute that separated Jean and Scott, and that Emma abandoned the club in a love for Scott. She has also appeared in many video games like Spider-Man, X-Men Arcade's Revenge, Wolverine, Adamantium Rage, X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse, and Marvel Avengers Alliance. Kota Ebenhard portrays the role of Celine in the 2019 movie Dark Phoenix. This version has telepathic talents and is part of Eric Leinscher's Mutant Brotherhood. She and the Brotherhood seek vengeance on Jean Grey, only to be apprehended by the United States government. Celine gets killed in combat during a Dibari raid. Fun fact, Kevin Grievous, co-creator of the hit movie franchise Underworld, acknowledged that franchise protagonist Celine is based on Celine Gallio. Kate Beckinsale confirmed that a crossover film featuring her as Celine and Wesley Snipes as Blade had already been cancelled in favour of a remake. Marvelous verdict, Celine Gallio's personal history alone makes her a requirement for Marvel Studios' mutant tales, since she was one of the very first mutants to find her way into documented history. Her link to externals, a clan of powerful immortal mutants led by Apocalypse might allow Marvel Studios to put a mutant perspective on a classic fantasy franchise. Highlander, the team of superheroes sponsored by the Irish government. However, she could make an appearance in Marvel Studios' Agatha, where Audrey Plaza could take on the role of the powerful witch. Now, that would be a treat to all the comic buffs. So, what do you think of Celine? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to click the like button and share the video with all your friends. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.